Hey guys, it's Anna, and welcome to my channel. I wanted to say a huge thank you to all of you because we have hit 20,000 subscribers on this channel. I am so excited, I'm so grateful. Doing this gives me so much joy. I love every single part of it. Thank you for being here with me sharing this passion together. I absolutely love it. So I'm gonna host a giveaway, an international giveaway. One of you will be winning a $200 gift card to Lucky Scent. Pick what you want. They ship to a bunch of different countries, so I feel like this was a great site to do this with. And they have an enormous selection of fragrances, so I felt like this was the best website to pick. As per usual, when I do these giveaways, we always have like the same rules. Just comment down below. Let me know you'd be interested to enter. Follow me on Instagram, Fragrance. Like this video. Be subscribed, of course. It's for my subscribers. It will run for a week. I will pin the winner's comment down below and I'll get you that gift card. I'm so excited. So transitioning into the video of today, I have a bunch of new fragrances that have entered my home. Will they be added to my collection? That is the question. That is the question of the day. Because it takes a lot. It takes a lot for something to be welcomed into the collection. The stakes are high. So I'll be honest, a lot of these were sent to me. I did buy a couple myself. I will give you honest reviews, as usual, always, duh. So the first selection of fragrances were, are, from Maisa. And they also gave me a discount code for you guys. I get no commission out of this. I am not an affiliate with this brand, so it's purely for you guys if you're interested in this house. It's Anna 20. So this first one is Destin de Jones. I'm trying very hard with my pronunciation. So forgive me if I'm not perfect. Also, I would like to say these bottles are gorgeous. Like we got a classic look. All of the fragrances have like a unique color to the juice, which is really fun. Anyways, this one, very good. It is very good and ultra gourmand. This smells sweet and literally edible. Like this smells like a vanilla chocolate marble cake with orange flavored frosting or drizzle. Did Chris say that? Did the perfume nest say that? I don't know. She may have, she might have. She said something very similar or maybe that <laughs> when she was describing the scent. Anyway, she was spot on. Or chocolate orange candies with a vanilla hint. Objectively, this smells very good, but it is too gourmand for my personal taste. And for some reason, I'm just not really into the scent combo of chocolate and uh, orange combined for some reason. It's just not like not quite my vibe, but objectively, this smells fantastic. If you're into your chocolate, orange, vanilla gourmands, and like I said, you wanna smell like that chocolate vanilla marble cake with orange drizzle frosting, this is gonna do, this is gonna do the job. This will have you smelling like that. Then we have Route de la Soie, but I think they changed the name because on the website, it comes up as Avenue de la Soie. It's the same thing though. So this is also nice. It's unisex, but leans masculine in my opinion. This is a great option for guys who are into clean aquatic scents with a hint of a fruity freshness. And there's no aquatic notes listed, but it's definitely giving me that overall kind of vibe. It's energizing, citrusy. You get a natural smelling sweetness from a juicy pear. And the base is giving you that safe, approachable kind of DNA for men. It has that kind of traditional man's cologne undertone vibe to it. So we have notes like sage, wood, musk, a translucent amber. I think it's a great option for guys who are wanting to get into fragrance. It's just overall agreeable. Everyday scent, out of the shower, for the gym. Then in this cute 50 mil, we have Jasmine Mysterio. This is a very nice fruity floral. It comes off 
a little bit tropical, very happy, warm, uplifting. We have peach, blackcurrant, vanilla, ylang ylang, jasmine, of course. I experience a touch of a green note just in the opening, creamy sweet florals, very girly and fun like a safe option. It's very agreeable. It's not like a, an obsession, but it's a big like for me. I enjoy it. This one, Soir d'Afrique, if you are into Armani Privé's, what is it called? Blue Turquoise. Yes. If you like that perfume, you will like this. It smells so similar to me. Like if that is out of your price range, just get this. Just get this and you will be very happy. It is much more affordable and you are getting still a gorgeous presentation. Marine notes, vanilla, incense, pepper, and patchouli are what I get the most. But to, to be honest, I can pretty much pick up on all the notes that are listed. But those are just the ones I get the most. It's a very, very unique perfume. If you've smelled blue turquoise, you know. It's a very well done, creative, exotic fragrance. It, it gives you like this spiced, bougie spa vibe, but it's really unlike anything you've ever smelled because there are notes in here that make it feel beachy and summery, but then there's a lot of like deep, rich notes that give it depth, a lot of character. So yeah, there's a real juxtaposition to the scent. It's deep and rich, but has a solar quality to it. It's creamy and very dense. A bit salty, a little smoky, lots of pepper, earthy, oceanic. It's just not for me because marine and vanilla notes combined just do not work for me. They unfortunately make me nauseous. It's just a combo that does not agree with my nose, but objectively, I think it's a great scent. It's so creative. It, it's just that that combo <laughs> makes me queasy. I've tried like every kind of salty vanilla out there and they all just kind of leave me feeling that way. It's a special scent though. I can appreciate it. This last one was my favorite, Jahara. I love this. This is seriously so similar to EBK's Ruby and Vanilla Neroli. So if that is out of your price range, get this and you will be happy with it. If of course it's your kind of scent. It does open up differently though, for sure. This opens up more sweet and for like the first couple minutes, it's gonna smell more close to your typical orange blossom scent, which is not for me. So like when I first sprayed it, I kind of immediately wrote it off. I was like, oh no, 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 because you guys know. <laughs> I'm like the biggest orange blossom hater. The only orange blossom scent I've ever loved throughout history is Ruby and Vanilla Neroli. But that only lasts for a couple minutes and then the dry down is stellar. I would totally keep this if I didn't already own Ruby and Vanilla Neroli, but because I find them so similar, I just can't justify it because that fragrance is so strong. Like it's going to take me forever to get through a 100 ml bottle. So I'm gonna gift this to someone else that I think would really enjoy it. But this has that expensive, refined, find orange blossom like oh my gosh it seriously smells upper class champagne like vanilla amber sparkling citruses patchouli it's sweet but classy it has amazing performance and this is a fragrance that you could absolutely wear year-round except it's not something i would recommend for hot days by the way if you were interested in this house, they have so many different fragrances um, and you wanted to kind of like test them first, they do have body sprays available that are at a much more affordable price than these. If you kind of wanted to like try before you fully commit, you can get a body spray first. Next up, I was sent the two newly launched fragrances from Soulja Boy. I'll just say here, I'm starting out with the fragrances that were sent to me. I will let you know once I get to the ones that I bought myself for transparency. I first want to go over the packaging before I get into the scents. So when I received these, the bottles themselves are nice. They're heavy, they're glass, they're good quality. However, these 
both retail for $250, which is definitely an expensive fragrance. Um, that's a niche price point. And I got nothing against a pricier fragrance. You just got to make sure everything is on point to justify that price. And I have to say, I was really disappointed by the caps that you get with these. This is incredibly light plastic like with both of them the quality is really not there with the caps actually both of them inside the paint is chipping off both of them were actually leaking a bit from the nozzle when i received them and i just i gotta say like at that price point i just don't Think that's acceptable for example i just bought this fragrance this is toca colette i believe this retails for 85 dollars and this is a heavy metal intricate cap you know that you can get at sephora so i hope that they take that into consideration and change that in the future so that the price tag reflects what you're getting and currently like i have gold flakes all over my pants just from taking this cap on and off getting into the scent i will start with the for her fragrance it's pleasant smelling on the skin i don't like how it smells out of here but it smells like an extremely general fruity musky floral definitely smells designer it definitely doesn't stand out to me it's nothing new or exciting you can get a fragrance that gives off this vibe at a much more affordable price point. So we have mandarin, strawberry, gardenia, vanilla, musk, and rose, but all blended together, it doesn't justify the price point. And even if it was more than an affordable price point, I'm just not a fan of it. Moving on to the For Him, this is the one that's gotten the most talk out of the two. I hear people saying that this reminds them of Baccarat Rouge 540. To me, this far more is comparable to Ariana Grande Cloud, in my opinion, because it does not have that refined, expensive, whimsical quality that Baccarat Rouge has to it. Instead, it absolutely has that sweet, creamy, more like dense sweetness that Ariana Grande Cloud has. It has that creamy lactonic feel from the coconut and vanilla in here. So to my nose, the vanilla and coconut jumps out at me the most. And it's totally giving me this vibe of prominent, airy, whipped, creamy sugar. With an undertone, of a typical guy's fragrance. You know, we got lavender, oak moss, bergamot, and sandalwood. So to my nose, it definitely leans more feminine, but to Eric, when I wore this, he was like, you smell like a boy. And he was not a fan of this. He said it smelled very young and typical to him. I honestly think it smells very good, but it's not, Again, offering anything new, it's combining two very popular scent profiles together, like a typical boy's fragrance with like an Ariana Grande cloud vibe. So yeah, I'm sorry. I really appreciate the gift, but I have to be honest and I value your money and there's no samples available of these fragrances like it's a 250 dollars blind buy and i just have to be honest with my experience so i hope that's appreciated i'm sorry probably not to soldier boy but okay moving on we have a fragrance from room 1015 cherry punk and i have to say i have gotten so many comments from you guys because i have complained about so many cherry fragrances on the market smelling the same essentially and i am looking for a dark edgy cherry i got a lot of comments about this one and i have to say it is fantastic absolutely tells a story the name cherry punk is perfection this is predominantly a leather cherry scent those are like front and center, the most prominent notes that you're going to get. Everything else is more supporting, more quiet. This smells like a rocker chick up and down, like a girl with 
super dark hair, like tousled smudge eyeliner. She wears a leather jacket, combat boots, or really high heels. Super glammed out makeup. She's a Scorpio. She has no filter. She is outspoken. She is bold. And she hasn't found a man because she's a lot. She's a lot to handle. It takes a very specific guy to be on her level. She listens to rock and Lana Del Rey. That's her music of choice. It's a little bit spicy from the saffron and Sichuan pepper. It has tonka bean and patchouli in the base. I think this is an excellent statement making fragrance. It is a little heavy on the leather for me. Like the more I wore it, I was like, it's a little too leathery for me. So you have to be into leather, you have to be into cherry. If you are, you will love this. Then I got a fragrance from L'Orchestre Parfum. This is Bouquet Encore. I have been so interested in this house. I love the inspiration behind it, the bottles, everything. So I also got a discovery set with this. So I was able to try everything out, which is why this is still packaged. And I unfortunately didn't find one that resonated with me, but this one is nice. I like it, but the tuberose and jasmine here pulls just a touch sour to me. And I don't necessarily mean that in a bad way. It doesn't smell like it's gone off or anything. But the specific floral that they used smells naturally a little bit sour to me. A little bit. Which isn't quite for me. It's vanillic, creamy, tuberose, and jasmine. And it's not a mature tuberose in that way, just classy. And I know that other people do, but I actually don't personally smell the pepper too much, actually. So it's pleasant, but not for me. The last two were kindly gifted to me by Twisted Lily. The first one being Juliet Has a Gun Ego Stratus. I really like the opening and mid. It's a nice, crisp, refreshing, energizing citrus and a cousin to Magnolia Bliss just in terms of how the citrus is done. I find that a lot of Juliet Has a Gun fragrances have this kind of DNA. I unfortunately can't pick up on the blueberry. That was the note and the part of the fragrance I was most excited about because as you guys know, I just love blueberry in my fragrances. So I wish that was more prominent because if it was, it would have given this fragrance a lot more character. So the opening in mid, I would definitely categorize as a unisex fragrance, but the dry down leans masculine in my opinion. A fresh aquatic vibe, slightly salty, clean, musky, fresh citrus. I get gin and tonic vibes a little. After about two hours, I would say the C notes really kick in and gives the fragrance a prominent salty mineral vibe. So overall, I think it's a nice fragrance. If it stayed more like the beginning stages, I would keep it, play around with it more. But the dry down does lean masculine and that kind of mineral vibe gets to be a little too much for me. Then a new release from Maison Crevelli Ambre Chromatique. Listen, <laughs> I love the note of amber but this is entirely too much for me. You need to be into your deep, dark, intense ambers to love this one. It's way too heavy, dark, spicy amber for me. It's very smoky, like a smoky incense and not like the very intriguing, more sweet leaning incense. No, it is smoky incense. Loads of pink pepper and quite Middle Eastern smelling to me. I get a touch of that vanilla, but there is barely any sweetness to this. It's dry. I personally would describe this as masculine. It's a lot. So sample it first before you buy. The last fragrances I bought myself First one being DS and Durga Radio Bombay. I loved my sample of this, like absolutely loved it, put it on my wish list. I got a bottle and I changed my mind. <laughs> I still think it's a good fragrance, for sure. It's just that the experience I get is so different now having the bottle versus the sample. My sample felt a lot more unisex where this smells much more masculine to me. Like this is a wood, bomb. With my sample, I got more of like a creamy wood vibe. 
Whereas now it's like a dry blast of wood with a very slight creaminess. It's powdery, it's dry. It's like a wood chip explosion of sandalwood and cedar. Musky and the coconut is subtle. It's quiet, it's supporting in the background, like a coconut meat with a slight bit of creaminess. That peach is not adding any sweetness at all. I do pick up on the iris, it's powdery. So it is a nice scent. I stand by that, but it just no longer feels like me. I like to have a little bit of like a vanilla, a praline, a sweet musk, like something, something in there with my woody fragrances. So I gave this to Eric to try out. He says he wants to like play around with it more to see if it feels like him or not. So yes, I still think it's excellent. I think it's a great fragrance. It's just no longer my cup of tea. Like I wore it the other day and I felt like I was wearing a guy's woody scent. And I want my fragrance to be an extension of me. So, um, last fragrance, I hopped on this real quick, Zara's Red Temptation Winter. I have not tried the original Red Temptation because I already own Baccarat Rouge 540. I also have Orientica Amber Rouge, which is a dupe to that. So I do not need a third one. But Red Temptation Winter had me intrigued. My first impression of this was wow. And I was like, this may be my favorite fragrance that Zara has ever released. By the way, just put that out there. This is not a dupe to the x straight version whatsoever. Not at all. This is a completely original fragrance. I've never smelled anything like it. It's very well done, has amazing performance. This has only like 10% of the Baccarat Rouge DNA, I would say. So it has that saffron, of course, but it just goes into an entirely different direction. It has a lot of character and depth to it, and the patchouli, to me, like I get that true patchouli scent, but then there's also part of the patchouli that leans chocolatey to me, like a dark cocoa powder note. Rich cedar, intense, earthy patchouli, spices, and some jasmine. The main things I get are the sweet notes, patchouli, and saffron in that order. And the patchouli is very intense. The more I wore it, the more it just became too much for me. So the blast of earthy patchouli with the dark, dry cocoa powder mixed with the dense sweet notes, it just all together became too much for me. Yet, I'm still impressed. They went outside the lines with this one. It's truly original and I do think it's good. It's just not a safe blind buy. Well, I mean, it's an affordable fragrance. So like you can still go for it, but I'm just saying. So that wraps it up. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and make sure to subscribe down below if you haven't already. If you wanna see me in any more videos, I'd appreciate it so, so much. I hope you guys are having an amazing day and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye.